in a world where Microsoft virtualization is still considered to be the underdog by some. The Hyper-V Amigos enlighten the IT crowds on how they could very well be mistaken. Hello, Carsten. <laughs> Hello, Didier. <laughs> Welcome back to another Hyper-V Amigo showcast. Uh, this we're time we are yeah. again talking about backup, right? Yes, apparently our lives uh, are at least partially filled with protecting data. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so uh, the last two uh, Hyper-V Amigo showcasts, we were talking about um, backing up um, storage spaces direct or Azure Stack HCI to uh, uh, storage spaces backup target in the first session and then to a high available storage spaces direct backup target and uh, we protected the VMs and now uh, we also uh, want to protect the hosts so um, the nodes you know, the storage spaces direct nodes and what we do today yes, we is do. also uh, of course usable with normal Windows servers right absolutely so it's for any physical workload yeah. so if you have a, a workstation if you have a server a file server uh, a sql server if you want to protect it physically you can do that the, there are of course some limits uh, the major one to notice is that it does not support csvs yeah. right? so um so that's... you maybe also remember a time where uh, veeam didn't have a, a, an agent for um for uh, separate workloads it was always about uh, virtual machines and uh, but they they added i think some years ago also an agent and it's now very mature i love it i have it on my notebook to protect my workload uh, there is a free edition yep. there is a workstation edition and there's a server edition and we will today so use the, community, the, server edition. the community edition now right so that's kind oh, of cool. the community i forgot the community edition you're yep. right so it's that's always cool. we can... have also the software, uh, a free software or community edition software for, let's say, maybe 10, 10, 10 instances. So if you're a small environment, you can yeah. get away with it, actually. Yeah. It's uh, it's kind of funky. Yeah. And actually, we have it for our Office 365 uh, environment. There are, you can protect 10, I think, 10 uh, mailboxes or so, or 10 users, and we, we use that. Okay, but let, let's try, dive into the session because today it's a little bit, uh, I think we will take some time and we will speed some wait time up in the video so uh, the yeah. viewers don't have to wait too long, right? Yeah, you don't have to look too much at booting screens and uh, waiting for five minutes to see something happen. When that happens, we will speed it up in, in the video so you won't be wasting yeah. your time with that. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's just go to the screen. We are now here at um, our um, backup and replication server. It's uh, version 10, as we had yes, in release, the last session. Release, still Kennedy. release Candidate 1, right? Yes. They, they, they're not going to bring out one that quickly for us, are they? <laughs> Okay, so um, in essence, maybe you uh, let me have the mouse for a moment. Um, we have still our um, two node cluster here. Let's open the failover cluster software. Here we have our failover cluster manager, and here's our two node uh, hyper converged S2D cluster with a lot of VMs in there. Yeah, but we don't use Hyper V manager, we show the roles in the cluster. and. The protection of the VMs is quite easy. We showed that, but now we want to protect our nodes, node, yep. so the two nodes, uh, um, because if there is maybe a disk failure or you have some problems with with the installation on C, um, you maybe want to restore yeah. such a node into into a cluster and not set up the operating system fresh and and so on. So yeah. this is just 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 two schools of thought here uh, huh? and I'm I'm always I, I, can, I can live with both it depends on the needs of the organization the company some people say oh it's fine we have this procedure to roll out a new cluster node so we can just do that if we lose one and some people are like yeah but for us it takes a lot of time and maybe the right guy is not at the office so then it's nice to have a, a tool like Veeam to to have your back right yeah so let's quite start with it huh let's start so maybe we get rid of the 
yeah. splash screen. Everybody knows by now it's V10. <laughs> okay, so we go to the um, backup infrastructure, mm. right? No. But the first thing we're going to do is go to inventory. Yes, well, here we have to add, of course, our servers. But you were right. You could you could show the fact that uh, the S2D cluster is has been added as a Hyper-V cluster under under backup infrastructure. So yeah. that's something we, we have already. that. You see it. You see it here. Yeah. With Adox all cluster. our backups here, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now we're going to inventory, and you have, you see the the entry for physical infrastructure that is highlighted right now. As you can see, we have already added uh, another S2D, the SOFS backup cluster nodes, actually. But now we're just going to add uh, the cluster, the, the HCI cluster with the Hyper-V machines itself. So if you create a protection group, we give it a nice name. So I'll try to be consistent. What did we call the other one? Tarox. You did call that. So I will I will edit, right? Tarox. Okay. Uh, dash S2D. S2D. Hyper V. Uh, oh yeah, HI yeah, is uh, yeah. backup. Backup, and then we do cluster, or, yeah. and we do it always dashes. Uh, that's how you like it, right? I like dashes more than underscores. Yes. yes. Uh, in this case, we're going to use. You can you can add individual computers. You could uh, even load a list of computers from a CSV file. But in this case, it's a cluster. We're going to use Microsoft Active Directory objects. We're going to just click next if you want. I'll talk in the meanwhile. So we so we connect to the the AD, and we will add the the cluster object, the CNO. And that will take care of everything for us. So you don't have to add your 64 node clusters, all the nodes individually, yeah. right? The... So I go to uh, this cluster is still in the computers um, group, yep. not in a separate OU. You it's the lab. So, that's okay. it. so here we have it. We go to next. Ah, this is important. Uh, so by default, they will exclude all virtual machines. Mm -hmm. uh, that means all virtual machines, not just the virtual machines that were running on CSV. You could ex you, you could exclude all the virtual machines. You could also, ex and by default, you also exclude any node that has been offline for over 30 days. For some reason, I hope that your clusters are managed <laughs> a bit better, that you don't have any any any, you know, two or three of them hanging around having been uh, booted for 30 days, but yeah. you know, uh, that's uh, and, yeah, oh, yeah, then the we following could add objects. Additional uh, passes or objects we don't want to back up with this backup, but we will not do that. We want to have a full backup, excluding the virtual machines, right? Yes. Okay, we go to next. We have to choose so need course, account. credentials. Account. Already pre correct. Yeah, here's our yeah, sorry, cluster. Let's go to Perfect. next. Can specify how often the schedule will be protected and so on. All the good stuff. Oh, but it's also interesting. You can have the backup agent auto update. Yeah, it's here. So that's always interesting. Uh, we are not going to install the block uh, change block uh, tracking driver uh, for an OS. Normally, that is not needed. It's more geared towards SQL Server things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are not going to do the perform reboot automatically if required. Uh, it wouldn't be good with a running required. S2D cluster, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not a big fan, right? So you don't want to do that. So that's why it's off by default. But if it's a, a, a brand new cluster you're, you're setting up, and there is nothing running on there, why not? It helps you with the process. But right. So we go to next. It will see if we have already um, the agent on the systems. Yes. And it already exists. Nice. No. Good. <laughs> okay. How would that be? <laughs> well, most of them are have come down with the the fact that they have been backed up with with the, with the virtual machines and the agent. We actually already played with it a bit, right? Of course, but we removed it. So uh, I said this is weird, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. We can that go well. to next. That's our summary. And we should do a yeah. discovery, right? Yeah, just let it run. Just let it run. Then you will see that it will find all the nodes in the cluster and check the status of it. So 
there's our cluster. So that's how you know that the cluster has uh, found all the nodes. You, it will list them. That's why I want to see Tarox S2D2 in there as well, please. That would be Come nice. On. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Just yeah. talking about it and then it pops up. And it is already successful. Oh, that's oh that that's how you add nodes to your cluster. So now I would like to see node 64, please. <laughs> it's, it's voice controlled. It's amazing. So uh, with with this type of protection, with protecting the cluster, we have everything uh, also protected that is in the cluster. The cluster uh, itself, all the objects, the database, and everything, right? Yes, you have, and uh, it will exclude the CSVs. But if you have another LUN, uh, and we will see that when we do the backup, uh, the performance history, for example, that's not a CSV. Yeah. Uh, that can be backed up. So that's kind of cool with uh, S2D. You 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 have your performance history even backed up. Yeah. Recovered if you if you want yeah. if you need it. It doesn't want. know what uh, the cluster performance history. It's a disk in an S2D cluster where the uh, where Windows Server 2019, so an S2D installation with Windows Server 2019 will store information about the cluster performance uh, counters or performance data every 10 seconds. So you can see how your cluster was performing the week, uh, over the month, over the year. That's yeah. very handy. So it's finished. So, it's close, cool. right? So that's done. That's set up. So okay. now we have to go to uh, and create a backup job. Yes. So. Backup job. backup job. And now, of course, we will not choose virtual machine. We will choose a Windows computer. We do that. That's because S2D is running on Windows, right? That's obvious. We're not going to use Linux here. So here then we have... can choose the type. Yeah, we're going to choose failover cluster yeah, because it is a failover cluster. The whole cluster. Yeah, and it's managed by the backup server. Cool. So That's, now we uh, take the same server. name, right? Tarox. Uh, it would be S to D, HCI, HCI, backup. No, to be consistent, backup. Was cluster. there something more? Cluster, I think. Yeah. yeah. Dash cluster. Cluster. Okay. Anyway, you you picked your favorite naming convention and uh, be happy. So then we have to add something here. Yes. And, and what we are going to add. Is our group. Group the HCI one, please. One. Yeah. Yes. And we take the whole group, right? Yep. Just put it in there. Next. We want to protect the whole computer, so not only a volume level backup, we also yep. want to protect yep. our boot partition. Yep. And, and we do not need to add external USB drives. We don't have those hanging around in our production units. Hopefully not. Unless well, that's your backup plan, the target. That's a different story. Let's go for a soft disk, right? Yeah, we do. On our high. And we keep teasing the we keep teasing the people with the with the server with the wasabi integration. <laughs> that's for. We will one. we will do another yet, another podcast about uh, that, right? Yeah, that's coming up. Yeah. So there is there is enough space. We can say how many uh, retention um, uh, so restore points we want. Mm? Yep. What will you say? 14, maybe? That's fine for me. It's a lab, so. Yeah. Go to next. Application aware processing. We will do that. Yes. Did you want to have a guest file system index? I would say no, because mm -hmm. this is not a file server. It's just a, just a Windows no. server. It's a, in essence, it's a, it's a boot partition, right? No. So, and we can add run yeah. the job automatically. Yeah, you don't need to run this every day if you don't want to. I mean, try to create a couple between your patching cycles and yeah. your to normally your your hosts are not changing, let's say on a daily basis uh, to the extent that you would need to create a daily backup. But you can you can just mix and match. Let's say we do it on Saturday, and one in the middle of the month should be enough. Just an example. Okay. So we do finish, and then we will click off, off the job manually. Yes. Here we are. There's a second one. Yes. Okay. 
start. It doesn't matter if it's an active full or... It doesn't or matter, it's the, first, it's the first backup, yeah. so it's going to be full. Yeah. Yes, we do. And it tells you, there we go. Actually, this shouldn't take too long. Normally, these backups uh, uh, cluster host isn't really filled with a lot of data. It's the operating system with the cluster bits, the Hyper-V bits, and that's about it. Yeah, so but it's not let's too say it, it is a bit of data, so... Yeah, but you'll see it's, it works pretty fast, in my experience, anyway. It's, it's normally a lot faster than a workstation or a laptop because those are filled to the to the brim with downloads and ISOs and code and articles and whatnot. But as you can see, it's uh, nicely cluster aware. Mm -hmm. It knows it's backing up the cluster. I cannot make this bigger, can I? Yes, a bit. It's sometimes it's hard in the GUI to find. Yeah. Can you move this window? I can't, huh? Nah, no, that's, that's the annoying bit. You have to... But we don't have to see the domain name. Come on, go uh, take it a little bit. I, I grab the mouse for a moment. <laughs> this is nice. So the domain name is not the important stuff. Here. It's powercourse.local. I use the same domain in my courses, so... So we are preparing for... That's, that's how you know whose lab it is. Exactly. If it says datawise tech dot corp, then it's mine, and if it says PowerQuiz, it's his, right? Yeah. So. It, yeah. Preparing for backup. That's always, always the annoying part. If you, if you wait, so the total size is nine hundred twenty-two gigabytes, but four hundred and forty-six gigabytes used. Yeah, but it's so. still a, a quarter of a terabyte. Yes, but we know why that is, I think, your history. My history? Of the cluster. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. The history, the cluster performance history is around 16 gigabytes. So that shouldn't be okay. the big part. It hasn't been run, running that long, has it? <laughs> <laughs> why is it so big? Is it this the size of your disk? Yeah, That's I think the disks reading. are 400 something. Uh, ah, so it's a combined. Yeah, so the C drive is very. It's it's a it's a humongous C drive with 452 gigabytes. Yeah. So now we, now we are going. going. Yeah, and I think we have some ISOs on there from the lab. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I remember something I did. I think there's also. Um, uh, a volume there, the collect volume, because okay. when you play with S2D, sometimes you have to clean the disks. You maybe remember that, and uh, when you oh, clean yes. the disks, everything except the C partition is gone. So I stored some important information in C. Yes, but normally you wouldn't fill your production nodes with, uh, let's say, extra data or store your movies or something. Yeah. Might so be a good place to start. Should we be a little bit quiet and I can speed up the backup process later, or do we t want to talk about something here? Uh, I think we've, we, we'll we'll stop talking and you can speed it up. But I think I think you'll be pleasantly surprised how fast it goes. I'm still very optimistic. So, hi, DD. Um, our backup has finished, and it took only 13 minutes. But unfortunately, if you look here, th we have a little bit of a time jump in the video because my laptop blue screened, and we had to, <laughs> I had to reboot it and install some firmware. So, but uh, in essence, we speeded up uh, the uh, backup process, and we have now a successful backup of the two, the two nodes and the cluster, right? 
which is kind of cool. And as you can see, if we hadn't uh, had that node one with the extra data because it's a lab machine, it would have been a bit more faster. Okay, so I have to give you the mouse and keyboard again so that you can also. Okay. So we see here we have the backup of the recovery petition uh, and the EFI petition. That's because of the boot system. And then, of course, the C drive. And as you mentioned before, it also backs up, backups, back, backups the cluster performance history uh, partition of the yeah. S2D cluster. So, oh, and this was a full fine. backup because it was the first one we made. Yeah. So may, maybe go, maybe go to uh, S2D2. Yeah. And there you should see that uh, it is skipping the CSV disks. Yeah. Right. And it is not backing up the, the performance history because that's not a CSV disk. Yeah. That's only owned by one node. Yeah, it's backing up the, CS, uh, the performance history, right? But only the owner. Starox yeah, only on STD1 in this case, not not on both. So that's uh, that's the difference. So cool. What's okay, happened? now uh, if we want wanted to restore a server, so imagine now we had maybe some disk failure or something, put in new disk, and we want to restore it. We can't do it yet. We have before that we have to do something, right? Well. We can we can already do certain things. If you yeah. go to home and you say restore, and you say an agent restore, you will see our backup. But uh, the entire machine restore, or the volume restore, the guest restore, or even application items. Let's let's go to this one. Uh, you you will see. Hey, wait a minute. What is this? This is not a bare metal restore. I can try a restore to a virtual machine or to Azure. But that's not my physical node in my data center that I can yeah. restore here. So we go back. And what you could do, a volume restore. Mm -hmm. And let's just click on this one. Just to show you that we have a backup of our newly added protection group, right? It's here. But we can only do volume level, file level recoveries. We cannot do a bare metal recovery of the entire system yet. Because for that, we will have to boot a system and point to the backup. Exactly. Just, so we need some, some kind that, of boot system, like a... Yes. Like and Veeam has you covered there. Let's cancel this. Veeam has you covered there. So we can... Uh, <coughs> excuse me. We can create a uh, recovery disk. Mm -hmm. So the media can be created manually uh, with the Veeam agent for Windows. Uh, and that's actually what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to go to one of the nodes of the cluster and start to process from there. Mm -hmm. uh, if we because we can't do it from the console here be uh, because uh, our system has CSVs, right? Yeah, that's basically what it boils down to. Well, mm -hmm. uh, if you if you do it with CSVs, you you have this uh, warning that you will have to. Uh, we start your nodes to gain back, uh, the, let's say, the best performance on your CSVs and not cause any issues. There is a nice uh, uh, white paper or a support article of Veeam on this. And I also think because we're on V10, the behavior has changed a little bit uh, uh, between V9.5 V9 and uh, V10. Mm -hmm. So that's that's another thing. Okay, but so let's go to a host and uh, let's do our boot media, right? Yeah, let's so do it. So we that. wanted to restore S to the two or one? What do you... Yeah, do you... that's up to you. You can choose. Uh, maybe S to the two because that's smaller. It doesn't have the yeah two the collection. Yeah, true. So let's let's take that one. So let's go here. We prepared that already. And we have to go to the directory where Veeam is installed. I always get it wrong. It's, it's, is it in program files? It's so in yeah. program files and endpoint backup. Yeah, it's still the old name, right? Yes, still the old name. And then you scroll down until you find something that says recovery media, creation, Veeam recovery. And so we have some now. nice yeah, endpoint backup. recovery. Little bit, little bit more. There it is. That's the one. Yeah. Double click oh, we, on we, it. Uh, sorry, endpoint recovery media. Sorry. Media. Sorry oh, for that. Were, it's this one. Early, uh, yeah, that's one. Yeah. Okay. We want to start it. <coughs> so, 
So now we can create an ISO image file. And it yes, asks us if we want to include the network connection settings, of course, because when we boot from the ISO, we have to reach our backup server. And that's, that is usually over the network. Yeah. Another option would be we, we, we have the backup files on, uh, let's say, hard disk, Locally, USB drive. A USB and, drive or something. Yeah. But we, we want but to do it be, over the network. Yeah, that's the most easy thing to do. And of course, you want to include the hardware drivers. So exactly. if any so controller drivers you need, uh, that's kind of handy. So we go to uh, next. Also, the driver. Yeah, yeah. Also, the drivers from from the boot device of your service is also also quite. Yeah. Nice. To and have, if right? if we know that we need, for example, some additional drivers here, that's not the case usually. But if we know that, we could add them to the boot image. But we don't. Uh, you you can add them. You can add them during the recovery process as well. So that's that's, that's also good to know. So if you for, if you need one and you've forgotten one or something has been updated and you need to update your driver, you can still add them. Yeah. Uh, Wi-Fi on the server normally we don't use. Normally it's not available. Lenovo has some nice little servers where that have Wi-Fi at least Wi-Fi antennas. Maybe you've seen them uh, at Ignite, even as yeah. the nodes, but uh, usually you don't have Wi-Fi. So we. It uh, proposes a, a path for the ISO that will uh, that it will create, and we uh, could uh, could ac uh, add uh, um, login credentials here, right? If we yeah. put the ISO on a share and not on the local system, but we will do that on the local system, and then we copy it off, right? Yeah. So let's click next, and it, there is a well, nice summary. What we will do. And then we I copy it off and I create a USB disk from them, a bootable okay. USB disk. That's usually what I do. But you can also mount it over the the, the BMC or the DRAC or. So here you see the the, uh, the arrow, arrow that you were yes. mentioning, the when mount this driver. Yeah, but it's not an error. It's just a warning. It's a warning. So yeah. you you will you will have uh, CSV performance degradation. So to avoid that, they they just recommend that you reboot the node. So what I try to do is I try to create this before I think take things into production. But of course, if you're adding Veeam afterwards, well, just just evacuate uh, a host and and then do it. Mm -hmm. And if you want to reboot it, you can. So, so we'll do it. We will reboot it, of course, because we want to do a recovery. Yeah. This usually doesn't take too long. You might want to speed it up as well, but it doesn't take very we'll long. See. We will yeah. just see how long it takes. And after we've created this one manually, we can show you what it looks like uh, if you want to create one in uh, in the Veeam backup recovery itself. Because if it's not an S2D or not a, not a cluster with CSVs, we'll just uh, point you to that, so you know what that as well. Yeah, we could do that now while it's creating the image. Huh? Uh, yes, we could. Let's go to PKV. Yes. Uh, normally, on the inventory, if you look, and we go, wait, where is it? Uh, is it on the inventory? Home. What are you looking for? Uh, create recovery media. Where where do we have it? Maybe on a on an oh. individual note. That you have to choose a note because there are two in there. That could be. Let's go. Yeah, here it is. Anyway. So re recovery media. And if I click this. You know, cho chose the other node. That's good. I chose the other node, but I, I'm not. I'm not sure if this is an uh, RC1 issue or not. But during the, there we go. So the error is happening again, uh, and I think you have it in, in the previous version as well. Uh, it just doesn't find the files it needs in the, in the backup. So for for uh, an S2D node, I tend to create the recovery media on the S2D node mm -hmm. itself with the, the agent tool. And then you're fine. Okay. 
So with a normal host that is not S2D or not a Hyper-V node with CSVs, or uh, would we would it work there? That sh that should that should work. I think okay. I, I researched that a bit the first time I ever saw it, and it's a small it's a small uh, thingy to deal with. Okay, so maybe we go back to our. Um, yeah, we can just click close this and go yeah, back to our node. That's that was two, right? Okay. Unmounting the image, so. Yeah, that's it's good. Done. It's already done. System drivers, .NET Framework. So while we are doing that, I will open a web browser and connect to the, the BMC of the server, right? Ah, yes, of course. Then we can mount that ISO file and uh, start a restore. First, we have to copy the ISO file from the server. And of course... That's usually a good, good idea. <laughs> so, of course, a typo. And I have done it over our screens. That's very... Our faces, that's very nice. Stupid me. It's not the right so, password and the right user. Okay, here we are. So this is finished now. So let's copy off. Uh, what, what we, what we could, I think, I think I, I seem to recall that, uh, but I don't know if it's if it's an RC1 issue. But if you if you move all the CSVs to to one of the nodes, so you have a, a node without CSVs. Do you remember you where that, that, uh, Just a moment. Do you remember where it was? It's normally on the documents. That's okay. the default location. Yes, you're so right, my friend. No, I, but I was thinking about the the the, the tool to create the, the the ability to create the the ISO uh, from the. Uh, oh, you mean the Veeam image backup. Burn. No, no, no. From uh, from Veeam backup and recovery, that if you move all the CSVs to other nodes and have one node without any CSVs, yeah, then that tool might work as well. Yeah. I seem to recall that from 9.5, so maybe it's an RC1 thingy, I don't know. Maybe. So let me just copy. Now we go, we do go somewhere else. I have to copy it down. We do it here. <coughs> oh, you already have one. For yeah, but for another host, you see, it's a Dell server. Ah, that that's maybe important. Uh, the more uniform your hardware is, the less images you will need. But if you have a lot of different vendors and a lot of different generations with different hardware drivers uh, in your data center, you might need to make a couple of these, of course. Yeah, <clears throat> that's true. So let's go here to Virtual Media. And if you have the time, you can create one big one with all the drivers in there. But that that depends on your your appetite for doing all that. Your appetite, that's nice. So where <laughs> <laughs> where did it launch our virtual media? Hmm. Not Is really. it open already? It's another screen. I can't see all your screens, so maybe no, somewhere. No, it's not on another screen. I, I see the screen, and it's not here. Oh, here maybe. No, here. Here we are. Oh, I love it. How do we get it here in front of us? Hmm, that's not the way to go. Let's just... Here it is. Ah. Uh, Move it. Where's the move? Unpinned from taskbar. There it is. Oh, oh there. Yes, I can see so it. There yeah. it is. How we get it? Move. There was something on maximize. Okay, here, here we, we are. Go. Cool. No, that's not cool. <laughs> so we will. Choose, we will choose, where do we put it? We put it on E, right? Veeam. Under Veeam, yeah. There it is. 
and then we mount it. And mount that, of it. course, yes. different to every BMC, but we could also create a good old um, DVD or CD uh, to boot from if your server is still a CD-ROM or you have a port. I, I just I just create USB boot, bootable USB sticks for that. Or a bootable USB stick, of course. Because I have no service left with, uh, with CDs or DVDs. Like this. Yeah, but there are USB CD drives, right? That's true. That's true. So why does but it... normally a USB stick is easy because, you know, why just does walk it up. Why to do this thing here? Okay, I have to... Oh, I love it. Okay. <laughs> Machine is running. We don't see anything of the machine. Yeah, there it is. So now you see it. Is. It's again here. I can't. I can't grab it. I love that. But we can do it this way. Oh no! With some tricks, we get it. Right. Okay. So here we have our screen, uh, and of course we. We don't destroy it, right? We just we just shut, shut it, down, it down. Formats the C drive. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> but we could. We could. You're gonna override it anyway. Yes. Actually. So I shut it down. Let's first see what the cluster does. We have we have some roles here. So we see everything is on Tarox 1 already. That's nice. The Note 2 is running. Usually you would pause it. But and of course, this is all us. Are, is the storage also on Tarox 1? Could you? Yeah, now, now it will be. Oh, it is. Ah, so before you, before you shut it down, let me, let me try something very I quickly. Do. You have the mouse. Go to PK1. So there should be no CSVs on. No, there, there are two right now, right? Yeah. So let's try this wizard again. Did I click it? Now you clicked it, for sure. Correct. There we go. Yes. Let's see if it's happier now. It takes longer, right? Yeah, I no. think it's no, uh, no same still same problem. And this 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 is maybe an RC one thingy, okay? Yeah. So okay, but let's let's uh, start start the restore yeah. because it will it. take you a while. It. You can have it. Yeah. So we shut the system down, or we can just restart it. We restart. I'll just shut it Come down. On. Shut it down. Some phase. And where is our? There's our screen. We go here to PK Veeam. We go to the backups. We go behind the jobs. Okay. This is a nice background for our system here. I said restart. What, what is that? <laughs> it's shutting down. I didn't the say reset. Service. Uh, that's true. It's a shutdown. And Shutting down service Veeam agent for Microsoft Windows. That's nice.
it is running maybe it's time deciding also. whether it wants to wants to know something about persistent memory or not. Do I accept this? This is funky. No, is it unbelievable? We were just so far. Okay, then. Okay, green let's screen, kick it off, my friend. A green screen. Yes. It took us a, a while. Veeam green. It's Veeam green. Look, Veeam green. <laughs> The recovery environment is initializing so, and very soon we will be at the uh, boot screen with our options. Yeah, so we are and back after, our... after uh, a short break, waiting for the the, the ISO to boot and uh, Didier and I, we got a bit, um, how you call it, um, unpatient. Board. So we entered uh, the a, a DVD with a DVD drive and it took also let's say 15 minutes maybe yeah, too, yeah long long enough to be annoying <laughs> so now we see uh, uh we think it has to do something with all the the drives are that are in the system ah so, there we are here we are so um we want to do a bare metal recovery right yes we do we choose that click on that So here we have the option local storage. That would be if we have a disk there, a big disk with a, with the data, um, but we want to restore it over the network. Yeah. We have our data stored in the Veeam backup repository. So there you can choose shared folder or Veeam backup repository. Yeah. So and we choose case. the backup repository, but we could also connect to a, a Cloud Connect repository or OneDrive. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. Here's the option to configure the network settings. I presume they are configured correctly. Should we do a look? No. Have a look if you want. So now we need the IP address of the backup server. And I have it. 252, two, I guess. Yeah. Username would be PowerCourse. Last time we had some problems here to enter. <laughs> what, yes. What, what did I meant with last time? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did you find the trick in the So when we change, have... the, yeah, change the keyboard. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's working. Admin okay. CR. So let's see. Get rid of the keyboard. waiting on the stuff okay yes, it's here we see we were connected okay. yeah um, yep, so. this is the backup we just created yes we only have one we restore point the second one right yeah we are restoring the second one yes because that's the smallest one it's less less a day ago it's it was uh it was 4 p.m now we have nearly 6 p.m but who cares if you can restore your server Entire computer. We try the entire computer. Let's see what happens. Sometimes we have to help him with the disk layout because we have a lot of disks. Yeah, and then, then we, you take the manual mapping. Yeah. And okay. Let's let's, let's do that. So we get, we go to the manual restore, right? <laughs> yeah. And here are our three partitions and the cluster performance history. Oh, yeah. If you we click, click on one, just to show what happens. So then it says it has an issue with the original disk layout. So what, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, customize the mapping. Just click no and customize the mapping. Let's see what we can do here. So it will have to enumerate all the disks that, that it can see. There, are there they are. There. So Ooh. now we need to find our boot disk, and if it's not in there, we're gonna have to mount the driver. Load the driver. Load not the driver, here. I should say. Load driver. Yes. So, so here's our rate controller. Our controller. We install the driver. Load driver. Yeah, 
that was wrong. Install driver. Okay. It has it already on the boot media, but it was not. Now we have it. Loaded. Installed. Now we see here. We have it loaded. Okay. Yes. Now we should have a disk that resembles our boot disk below, I guess. There it is. There it is. Usually, we um, it would be an empty disk, I assume, or we have some problems, some issues with our boot system here. Yeah. Yeah. So either either it's corrupt or yeah. it's uh, a it's replacement disk. Right? And now, oh, it auto it maps it correctly. Yeah, I hope so. The partition seems mapped correctly. Yeah. Are we going to restore the cluster performance history? Or no, not? we have it. Our our cluster is still yeah. running, right? It's only one node. So go yeah. to yeah. go to next. We are going to ag agree with this. Yes, restore. Go to restore. And it's running. It will take some minutes. Then yeah, we maybe will. Maybe you can go. To uh, yeah, and uh, then we can also have a peek at the backup server to see that the job is running there. Yeah, here. Yeah. So here we have one running job. But Region. we can't see yeah, any that's... statistics here. No. So let's let's go let's go back and see how it's doing. Maybe I can arrange the window so the, that we can see both. Fair enough. So saving restore logs. What would you say? How long will it take? It was it was around 28 gigabytes, right? But we have to yeah. it has to create the EFI partition, um, yeah. the boot part. Now the network is pretty decent, right? So that shouldn't be a, bo a bottleneck here. Yeah, it is actually. Um, what do we have? We have one gig for the management interface. We we are not using RDMA here, of course, because this is a Pixie boot system. So I think we are restoring over the management interface with the agent, not SMB3. Yeah. How would you think they, were, they could uh, do some magic here? We could always take a peek at the uh, at, uh, backup target and see if we see the traffic going over the management, Nick. Yeah, but that's a little bit... The question is, where is the disk mounted? Where is the connection going? It would be one of those servers. It is a backup target. Yeah. I can have a peek. Let's see if we see if it's not RDMA, we should see it in the task manager, right? So here is nothing going on. Let's have a look at the other one. That's RDMA counters, task manager, performance. Also, not really something going on, but the question Maybe is it's not, are we restoring it's not copying, the moment, right? Maybe not copying data yet. Yeah. So now it's still ah, saving it's the, done the logs, that's good. <laughs> so we can here maybe move this here. Question is which one has the disk four? Did you know if I oh all disks are at uh, Tarox S two D three? That's because we did the VM fleet on the servers and then the CSV balancer is turned off. So normally okay. the cluster would push a CSV so to that, the other node. So three should be our candidate, right? 
Yeah, so now it should be updating the partitions and stuff. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, where did we did we store? Yeah, this, it was on one of those disks, of course. So that should used, be the server. This. Yeah, but it's not copying data yet. Hang on. No. So it should be updating the partition, creating a file partition, or restoring it. So it's not happening yet. Luckily, we have the speed up button, right? Yes, we have. Because the restore itself won't take very long. But but in general, I mean, the fact that the saving the restore locks took two minutes and 23 oh. seconds is very, very, very long. Normally, this goes, goes faster. So, petition. Now we're recovering. So I yeah, saw restore. half a gigabit on this interface here. Uh, now we see yeah. half a gigabit here, and another oh, one. Look at that. It seems that it is doing a SMB three. Oh, that would really? be nice. Multi-channel in action. Yeah, but with the boot system. Cool. Well, it's a, fi it's a file share, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, but this is a pixel boot. That I meant. Yeah, but it's a Windows Pixie boot, right? Yeah, so it can leverage SMB3 and multi-channel. That's amazing. So we will see. I it. like it. Yes, I like so far. It. Look here, we have 500 megabits here, 500 megabits here. It is only a one. Yeah, usually this would have one giga, giga byte. What's happening? Yeah. We see 500 megabits. I'm 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 impressed. I'm really am impressed. It. But those are your two Manalux cards, right? We can have a look. This is yeah. yes. So these are yes. these are capable of doing a lot more. That's for sure. Yeah, but, but it's good. I'm I'm really shocked that we see uh, something Don't like that. Be happy. Be multi-channel here. <laughs> and you? I like it. I like, I, it. I like it too, but I, I would never uh, would never presume it, it would do multi-channel from a Pixie boot. This is not a full Windows server we have here. So, it so it's restoring and restoring. <laughs> it's a bit. It's a bit. It's a lot of data. Fifty-eight gigabytes. I, I thought we only. Uh, Back up to uh, 20 something, 28 or so. So it's yeah. writing the zeros, huh? Probably. That's NTFS. And it's restoring with 900. Think, so I, now I it's writing the zeros. zeros. You see? It must be the zeros, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> now it's like going in overdrive. Okay. I'm very impressed what we see here. I'm really impressed. Yep. After the long wait for the boot. Uh, it, it must be writing zeros because there's nothing com coming over the network no. right now. Yeah. We're now 100% done. Yep. Updating drivers, I guess, and registry, yep. So it should know after the drivers that the system is ready and mark it as restored. Come on. So that was really impressing. So, and now if the system still boots, we are golden. If it doesn't boot, we will blame RC1, right? Yes. <laughs> That's exactly what we'll do. What will happen? <laughs> Updating drivers. Come on. 
the seconds go by. And we are proving that time is relative. If you're waiting for something, every second it's lasts. It's amazing. If you wait for something, <laughs> two minutes are a long time. But it is a bit slow at the moment, I find. I've seen it. I've seen this go faster. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it, come on, it's a release candidate. It's a release candidate. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, it's, it's a release Someone candidate. Someone would argue maybe they they didn't change the restore part, but uh, at least we can say it's a release candidate. <laughs> so come on, my friend. Update maybe they have the old debug the level at maximum in the, in the, yeah, of in course. the release candidate. Yeah, that's true, right? The software is uh, the re release candidate, so they uh, they will have telemetry yeah. so they're now probably wondering somewhere in the development offices of veeam what the hell are those two guys doing <laughs> oh now the restore process finished at so give yeah. us a finish button please just that's all we need now the finish yes. button. <laughs> now we have a finish, finish. Button. yes okay we will press the finish button and yes. we will reboot the system and we stay here yeah. on the console So we go, six. To, we go to Tarox 1. Yeah, we see here our node is down, and then we will get yeah. back our boot screen. So hopefully. And there we go, there we go. F6, was it? You think we have to Otherwise, press it? Uh, I think you're okay because if you don't press uh, any key when the when they're booting from the virtual disk, it will just skip it. Yeah. But it will boot from it first because it was the first in the in the order. We'll see. <clears throat> eventually. Yes, exactly. Eventually. Some of my of my colleagues would might might say, "Oh, I would have reinstalled the server by now," but in reality, they would. Know. No, uh, because this machine is uh, um, also now in the cluster, right? Yes, it's completely as it should be. It's going to yeah. be. It has everything uh, everything uh, that was there on it before. So the the patch it, level is a member of the cluster. It has the same. Uh, the same UI, UI, the com same uh, computer uh, conto in AD. So, uh, yeah. if you install it fresh, it's not the same. You need a bit longer, right? That's all things you need to take care. Of. Well, you can make it the same, right? To I me, mean, you can re we, you can reuse the computer name object. Eh? You reset it, and you. But it's a lot of it's yeah. a lot of steps you need to take. And uh, the cluster, rejoin the cluster, or would you do? Is there a possibility to? Uh, you're now, if to you control. if you use a computer object, of course. So now we see a boot. Drum roll! Drum roll! We, well, you are right. The CD is. Skip support. it. Let's skip it. Yes. Don't touch. So I I I didn't do this. So now, please give us a how you call it a whirly a, with, a, whirly. a whirly without waiting half an hour. Yeah, <laughs> a whirly and boot, please. <laughs> <laughs> and don't let us wait another 30 minutes. Yes, the there is the world. It was much faster than from the CD. Don't jinx it. I'm not jinxing it. I'm just staring at the whirly, holding my breath. Well, not completely because I don't want to die, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something is happening. It struggled a bit, right? Yeah, we'll see. <coughs> yeah, something is happening here. There we are. So we have now, okay. it's on, unfortunately, this is a German. It's uh, joining the cluster. 
Yeah, it's Mind joining. Image. So uh, well, I give you virtual high fives. <laughs> virtual high five. <laughs> So it's, it's joining, paused. it's paused, we paused it, right? Yeah. We can unpause so now it, we'll I'll, resume I'll, it. And resume the workload to make sure and demo that everything is hunky-dory. Yes. We will move a disk over. We will maybe also give it some VMs. It's, it all, it's oh, it's already live migrating, you see? Yeah, you said pause with unpause with resume, so. And the disk has moved. Take a look. You moved that disk, right? I thought so. Yes. No. Not I moved it, but best possible. Oh, there it was. Oh, it's I still the cluster. Refresh. Ref refresh the no no oh, refresh there it is it is there, there, it is. there it is. you had to refresh the GUI it was uh, the roles slow. are there too yes 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 our cluster is fine our cluster is so, fine um, so it's up it's that, booted let's look a uh, let's have a last look at yeah the the backup went well yeah yeah so I would say that concludes. <laughs> a successful restore, um, bare metal restore of our node, right? Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, I, th I think I it's like really it. cool. So I like it. I um, like this option. Um, I must confess, I like it too. So we have now a protection uh, group for our um, for our uh, S2D cluster. It will take a backup every four days. Um, yeah. And twice a week, basically. Twice a week, yeah. And if we have a problem with a node, we can just restore it out of uh, out of the backup. I think that's amazing. We have our ISO image. Uh, the ISO image also should work with the other Tarox server, the other cluster member. But if you want to yeah. go be sure, you can create a no your own, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, th I think I think these will really work. Uh, I usually create a recovery disk for per per type of server I have. So if I have 740s or 730s or 720s, the Dell the Dell ones, then I have one per type. Or if they differ too much from hardware, as long as it's the same type, you can add some drivers and you know which drivers you need. But it takes some time to figure that out, and not all people have that. Sometimes it's just easier to have a couple of restore mm. USB disks lying around with different yeah. options. So um, to be sure that we booted uh, the right system, there is a trick with the event log. Yes, right? we go into the. Yep. We should see, we should see... Uh, two hours no events here. Yeah. When those last uh, application was system. Just go to system. You should see a lot a of where's the timestamp? It's here. We should see a lot of from the boot 18, 18, 18, 18, 18. Let's see 18. Oh, and there yep. we were 15. So I have to click here now. 14. 15, yep. 16. Yep. Here we have here we have the yep. proof. This was 601. Yep. Nice. Actually, is that the proof? Yes, we did our backup of the system at 6001. We can prove that. So here was the backup success. So here we did our backup at 16, six, so 4 p.m. until 4.13. So our machine was still running, right? Yes, And that's good. We created our recovery image around five o'clock, so, so the system was still running. And um, oh, where is it? Here is it. Uh, this is the proof that we restored the version from 60.01. Oh. Otherwise, we would have event logs from 16.30, 16.45, and even uh, yeah. 5 p.m., right? Oh, yeah, and if you're wondering about the missing 12 minutes, well, it's a snapshot, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, 
So, Didier, I would say that concludes another um, Hyper-V Amigo showcast. Um, I call this mission accomplished. Yes, we did. Uh, we did already Christmas wishes and Happy New Year wishes. And uh, maybe we will be up soon with another Hyper-V Amigo showcast about something also very interesting. There's a lot of interesting things happening. It is. We've already given you a hint about it, so it yeah. might have to do with uh, Wasabi or AWS or Immutable Azure, Storage and the Azure Sober. Cloud storage, and it would be nice Stuff to like do that. Yeah. one of those. Okay, okay. so it's uh, after six um, on Saturday. I would say I'm very hungry, so uh, let's uh, call okay. it call it a, se a showcast and goodbye, Didier. Okay, Have goodbye, nice Carsten. See you next time. Yeah. Always a pleasure. Yes, it bye -bye. is. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.